viewers, it's the 18th of February, I think spring has sprung, look at it, it's absolutely gorgeous out there, but I actually feel in quite a pudding mood, so I'm making a little frangipan now, guys, students especially, I want to show you, okay, so that is a pastry that I bought reduced to clear one night a few weeks ago, it was 39p instead of 169 I've already saved £1.20, students, that's £1.20 in the bank that you're not paying interest on for the next 25 years. Get it in your freezer, get your Sharpie, communal living, we all know what it's like. Right on it, there we are, Louise, it's my pastry. So I've defrosted it today when I'm in the mood for a bit of a pudding. Um, so what have I done? I've blind baked it, I've put it in a dish, blind baked it and put, I didn't have raspberry jam, which is traditional with a pear frangipan, which is what I'm gonna make, but I have this black cherry, um, it's like a gorgeous conserve left over from Christmas, so I put a little bit of that in the bottom. And now I'm going to make a frangie pan. I've got in here three ounces of butter that I've melted. And I've only added an ounce of sugar because you know me by now, I don't have much sugar. Most recipes would call for three or four ounces. I don't think it makes any difference. You've got sweetness in the almonds that we're going to put in. You've got sweetness in the jam and you're probably going to add custard to it. And of course the pears that are going in. So I, you get used to cooking with a little sugar rather than a lot, guys, believe me. Okay, so into that we're going to add three beaten eggs that I've got here in this gorgeous cup that someone gave Catherine for her birthday. Sorry, whoever, I, I can't remember who it was and she's not here today. So, uh, But beautiful little mug there. Um, and I put a little bit of beaten egg just on the edge with a pastry brush here. So I take a little bit out there and done that. So I'm going to pour this very gently into the butter, into the butter and sugar mix and mix that in. This is so quick and easy. Just a little bit of time. Yeah, we've got the best of the yellow today. I think this is disc two. Excellent stuff. So here we go, just have that in gently. I mean, it, it, it shouldn't curdle. Sometimes it does a little bit. It doesn't make any difference to the taste in the end when it comes out. Um, about 25 grams of flour going in now. Um, that's probably a little bit too much there, so let's put a little bit of that in. Before I do that, I'm going to have the almond essence first of all. So that's um, French almond extract I've got there. Probably about a teaspoon of that. I'm doing that now because I sometimes forget. Um, so that can go into the egg straight away, and we know that's in there, that's going to be just delicious. Right, about, about 25 grams, one ounce of flour going in now, I did sift that. Um, you can always add a bit more flour, so I'll go less. I'll give that a good stir. And here, on the gorgeous retro scales, um, I've got about five ounces of ground almonds. And we got those from Marks and Spencer's the other day, very, very nice. Um, a few flaked almonds there as well. Oh, well, I'm thinking about it. Viewers, what we found eggs wise. Let me just share these with you. Um, I'm not going to use them today. I'm not quite sure what I'm going to use them with, but Marks is now selling different premium free range eggs. There are green ones, speckledy brown ones, and white ones. So I don't know whether they're going to taste different, um, but I can't wait to try them. I've mentioned those there. Right, so in go the almonds into the frangie pan. Oh, that's looking lovely, really, really nice. Yeah, it'll take a little bit more. We can put all that in. So that's five ounces of almonds. Stir it round. Gorgeous. It did not need all that flour, so you know, be sensible. If your mixture looks like it's not going to need it, don't put it in. So I think that was about 25 grams of flour. When it's so all I'm going to do simply is spoon it into the pastry case which I did blind bake for about 10 minutes. You don't have to, but it prevents it from having a soggy bottom and none of us want soggy bottoms, really, do we? So, in that goes. Beautiful. So fast. Spread it round. Now this was a tin of um, Del Monte half students. I got this when they were two for a pound, so it was only a 50p tin. It's been in the cupboard for a few weeks. Um, but there we go. Now I have to say, these pears, 
were not very even. Some were small, some were big. Um, normally you get four pairs about the same size, but it doesn't really matter. It's all going to taste the same. So we'll stick those on there. That's a tiny one. I'll put him in the middle with his other side. There we are. Yeah, a really tiny one, that one. Look at that. Aww. Okay, we're going to go the rest. It's not going to be a work of art. It is just going to taste gorgeous. There we are. I'll try and squeeze them all in because I hate to waste anything. So there's a little gap there. And the last one. I can go in there. Alright, and just a few ground almonds on the top. There we are. And that's going in on about 180 gas mark four. I'm going to keep an eye on it, but I would say 25 minutes. So I'll probably check it after 17. And I'll let you know how I get on with that later. It's going to be with some delicious custard, I think, or fresh cream. Um, it would be really nice with that as well. So, okay, guys, see you later then. Okay, here it is, viewers. Absolutely gorgeous. The smell is phenomenal. Very almondy and, and delicious and pear and absolutely gorgeous. And my goodness me, there's only this left by the time everybody gets in, it'll be a miracle. Um, so I'm off to scoff some of this now. I should try and only have one piece. Make this one, guys, and let me know how you get on with it. It's absolutely gorgeous. Okay, take care of yourselves and be kind to each other, and I'll see you tomorrow. Bye!